The boy jumped over a countertop, skidded down the corridor, and swiveled left into a narrow archway. Magnus followed in with big, confident strides. Breathing slowly and deeply, she could notice the contrast in his shaky, shuddering breath as he cowered in a corner and glanced left and right, unable to figure out an exit. From fifty feet away, Magnus heard him fiddle with a metallic grating. Oh, no you don't, she murmured. But then she caught the sound of the chute being pried open. Breaking into a sprint, Magnus charged through the barriers and skidded left and right to avoid crashing into passersby. All they saw was a figure in black metallic headgear and a suit of armor that soundlessly jumped over the final countertop and skidded down the archway. Time's up, Eblem, she said to the boy. He looked up, his eyes full of terror as his legs and feet dangled in the chute, exposed to the ever-expanding galaxy below. His terrified face reflected off the shiny surface of the headgear before she held up a tranquilizer gun and zapped him asleep. What's that? asked the barista as he handed Magnus her cup. She looked back at the huge backpack strapped around her shoulders and smiled. Just some goods I'm transporting, Ori. She smiled, thinking about the reward that she would earn for the handover of this particular bounty hunt. Ori shook his deep blue head. I'm amazed at how much strength you have, mate. Ori could not tell who he was speaking to. The voice synthesizer fitted into the black metallic headgear neutralized the sound emitted by her vocal cords. It sounded a tad robotic, but in a decidedly gender-neutral way. Thank you, Magnus said. She acknowledged the compliment because she had worked especially hard to become so strong. She didn't discount the gift that the gravitational density of her home planet had imparted to her, the enhanced hearing, vision, and physical strength. But she had put herself through a lot of training to get to the point where she was today. Ori nodded. He appreciated the creature's sense of pride, but at the same time it put him off a little. It was strange for someone to be so independent and self-reliant in a host of galaxies that were all interdependent on each other for survival. A few decades ago, a series of conventions had formed to roll out protection protocols for the world. Some of them recruited soldiers to fight off colonized planets, Others brought about mandatory efforts. Ori's guess about Magnus was that she, or it, was one of the former. Magnus could sense Ori's simultaneous unease and regard for her. She picked up her drink and took a sip. Not a lot of people order magnesium concentrate, Ori said. I've been working here for the past five years, and you're probably one of three people who drink this thing. A soft smile appeared on Magnus's face. Behind the black veil that prevented the world from learning about her identity, it accentuated the delicacy of her features. She liked being told that she was different. She had worked so hard to make sure that she was like this in the best possible way. Thank you, said Magnus, finishing her magnesium concentrate and tossing the paper cup into a recycling can. Ori nodded with a bright smile. He had always respected this person. For the past three years, he'd been observing it here in transit always alone and always on some kind of mission or hunt. The Gwarden C-21 was an intergalactic travel ship that made port at various transit points. Any idea when this ship makes its next port? she asked. Probably within the next hours, in fact, he said, turning around to clear up the jars. It was time to begin packing them away. Behind him, Magnus began walking away. All he saw was an iron-clad creature carrying a backpack more than twice its size, Boy, that man must really work out, Ori thought to himself. He glanced at his own slightly protruding belly and made a mental note to do something about it, beginning perhaps by consuming more magnesium sulfate. Magnus strapped herself into the cockpit of her ship. It was stationed at the Dama Break transit point where she had left it a few months ago. Behind her, the backpack writhed and wriggled. Oh, stop it, she murmured under her breath tapping and swiping on various screens in front of her to authenticate her presence and power the ship's engine. She needed to deliver this boy as quickly as possible. She glanced at the intergalactic bounty display on her screen to her right. Three years ago, it had borne a hundred names. At present, it bore only eight. And soon, they're only going to have seven, she said to herself with a pleased smile. Eblin Karavit had a reward worth half a trillion ethers on head. And Magnus needed that money. The Zero Dad Foundation had been a private bounty hunting organization three galaxies away from Vala. But Magnus had signed up. 
Over the years, she had brought them various creatures. Of the 92 bounty kills that had been made, Magnus herself made over 50. And for the past six months, she'd been on the hunt for Eblem Karavit. He was a military soldier gone rogue who had originated from the plant Farah, but had been gone on to fight wars for his neighboring planets. Over a dispute with one of his superior officers, Eblem had taken off from his station. The Federation had categorized him as MIA before one of his former colleagues caught him boarding a transgalactic vessel with a heavy amount of armaments. A team had been dispatched to the ship to catch him, but Eblem had miraculously escaped. No one had been able to understand how he had survived for so long without any of his former resources and without contact with any of his friends. An emergency status had been placed upon Farah, and all entry points to his planet had been heavily monitored since then. When Magnus had read his files, she'd smirked. Ebla may have been able to slip away from military officials, intergalactic investigation agencies, and private hunters, but he was no match for her. Magnus had begun to look for him in the entry and exit points to Farah. She'd interviewed the officers stationed there and gleaned off certain bits of information. Then she'd located Eblem's superior, who he had first got into an argument with. He's really good at switching disguises, Sirius, the military officer, said. Do you have any of his belongings? Magnus had asked. He had led her to the bedroom that had formerly been occupied by Eblem. You might find some of his stuff here, he had said, but I doubt that would be of any use. Magnus had nodded politely as Sirius shut the door behind her. She'd opened drawers and cabinets. She had looked under the bed. Everything had been wiped clean. Then she'd come across a small leather pouch, folded closed and sealed shut with a magnet. Magnus unclapped the pouch and discovered within it a silver rock. Have you ever seen Ablam with this? She asked, walking up to Sirius as he sat feet up by this desk. Yeah, I used to carry it sometimes, Sirius said. But given the amount of trouble that he's in now, I doubt he would miss it. Magnus had smiled. She'd gotten the confirmation that she needed. The leather purse and the stone both contained Eblem's pheromones. And with her enhanced sense of smell, she could pursue him with this clue alone. It had taken her a long time to get a hold of him still, but the hunt was finally over. Now Magnus relaxed into her seat. Eblem was going to be the last of her hunts. With the money that she got from this, she and Cory would have enough to be able to relocate to another planet and continue the rest of their lives in peace. Magnus had not killed Eblem yet, though. She'd hated that part of the job. It reminded her of the dying screams of all the fellow Valens around her. And it was something that she wished that could be done without. But perhaps it was time. Magnus extracted a small vial from the inner pocket of her trench coat, which hugged her slender figure. She gazed at the pink liquid inside. This should be quick and painless, she said. Then she got up and turned around to startle. The backpack was not there. Magnus ran up the length of the cockpit, tapped open the sliding doors, and scanned the other room. It was empty. Magnus clenched her fist. Where have you gone, boy? She rasped.